Welcome to the Networking with Michelle podcast, the show dedicated to providing you with life strategies with a little bit of entrepreneur advice. Here we believe in the Jim Rohn quote, success is nothing more than a few simple disciplines practiced every day. Hey everyone, welcome to the Networking with Michelle show. I'm your host, Michelle Gourmet. Uh, very grateful to be in your presence today. Hope all is going well. Hey, I do want to let you know that this episode is brought to you by Zero, Zero X E R O. Look, it's the end of the year. If you got a side business, small business, full time business, however you want to call it, you got to get your books in order. Yes, your accounting in order. You need to see where that cash was going for the past 12 months. Zero is the accounting software that you want to try. And if you go today, to my website, to the link, you can get a free trial. So go to michellegomay.com backslash zero, X-E-R-O. So that's michellegomay.com backslash X-E-R-O. Click on the picture, boom, start your free trial uh, when you sign up through that referral link. Look, today I'm interviewing Mr. Larry Brooks. If you're in Houston, I'm sure you already know who this man is, also known as the Texas Real Estate King. And it's just an insightful interview as we talk about not just real estate, but, you know, really understanding who Larry is, the man, the entrepreneur, and um, things that are important in his life. Uh, So, hey, without further ado, here we go. All right. Hey, good people. Welcome back to another episode of Networking with Michelle. Today we have special guests. All the Houstonians know them. Maybe the Texans, right? Not the football team. (laughs) But Texas real estate king, Larry Brooks himself. Larry, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? I am great, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on. Yeah, thanks. It's always exciting seeing an old friend. Oh, yeah, you know, harassing me on Instagram. It's yeah, all good. I'm that guy. I'm that guy. <laughs> no, it's all good. I always say I'm accessible to folks. So, no, but I definitely appreciate you reaching out, um, especially now because you've had a great year. So we have plenty to talk about. Yeah, we do. It's been, it's been awesome. I can't complain at all. So describe your year in one word. Besides awesome, of course, right? <laughs> Amazing. How so? Um, just a lot of my, everything that I wrote down in October of 2016 as goals Mm -hmm. that I wanted to accomplish, Mm -hmm. I blew them out of the water. Yeah. So did your book come out late last year or early this year? It actually came out very, it came out early this year, February this year. Okay. Mm Okay. Okay. So how's that been? First book under your belt? First book under my belt. I've sold over 500 copies and it's been exciting. It's been, um, it's opened up doors that I really didn't foresee coming. Such as? Uh, I started doing a lot more public speaking. I okay. never, I had always been more of a trainer, so okay. I would come in contact and be able to train people in real estate or the small business activities. Uh, but what I found is after the book came out, more of my motivational piece started uh, mm. becoming, more people became more aware of my motivational piece. So I did a large amount of traveling um, and speaking motivational. All right, so we're going to get to the the motivation piece because I feel I think I'm heading that route myself, but okay. we'll, we'll we'll get to that later. So the Texas real estate key. Yes, ma'am. All right, so how did you get that name? That one. So I I grew up in a hip hop community, and when I say that, when I was coming up, everyone had a they had their name and then they had a niche name. Okay. Right? So you had not the nickname, but yeah, a niche. Not, not the nickname, right? <laughs> okay. So, um, I, when I was coming up, one of the things that was very popular is I worked hard at real estate. Mm-hmm. And so a bunch of people within the office that I first worked for, work with as a realtor, would always say, oh, you're going to be the Texas real estate king. Guy mm-hmm. one day. Like everyone's going to know you mm-hmm. for real estate. Mm-hmm. And I just took it, hugged it, and brought it into my own. So it's wow. been something that I've carried on from um, just peers for for years and years. So it's, it's my thing. So how long have you been doing real estate? 16 years. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So straight yeah, from college. Yeah, Stra- I get stuff. Straight from college, during college? Yes, yeah, so a little bit of it doing college. Okay. Um, a friend of mine and family, his family kind of introduced me to mm-hmm. the loan officer side of real gotcha. estate. And so I started doing that uh, part time when I was in college. And so cool. I kind of carried over. Um, ideally, ideals of it carried over once I got out. You know, I got into it full time. Okay. And the name of your company? Is Brooks and Davis Real Estate Firm. Okay, Brooks and Davis. Obviously, I'm good friends with your partner, 
Michael G. Davis um, through the HBLI Houston Black Leadership Institute. Yeah, I mean, I, I see it from time to time. No, that's that's my guy. We, yeah. In January, we're going to be celebrating ten years. Ago. Wow. So it's uh, most partnerships don't last like that. Yeah, let's talk about that. So, what are you know, business is tough as is, yes. but what are some two, three key qualities Man. that you need to have to have a good business partner relationship? Understand that it is, uh, in the sense of the word, a marriage, right? Mm -hmm. That people use to identify certain things. So mm -hmm. we have very open communication. There's mm -hmm. nothing that Mike can't say to me that's going to, that's going to make me, uh, I guess, you know, respond in a, in a negative way mm -hmm. because he understands me. Um, even in the beginning, so when me and Mike first got together, and I, when I come back to those points, but when yeah. me and Mike first got together is when the market was going down, and uh, he, he was in this office building, his lease had expired, he had a team of realtors that he was working with, or staff that he was working with, I had an office building um, a few doors over, oh, wow. okay. and so... I had invited Mike. I said, hey, I just got this office space. I had started a company myself. It's called Brooks Store Properties initially. Okay. And the market had went down. So there were no homes being sold. There were no people buying houses. It was just at a stagnant. But I did a very good job at saving. But I opened up and got ready to start this business. And I had all this office space to myself. Mm -hmm. I invited Mike and his team um, over to share the space with me for a year. Share bills with me. Bills with yeah, me as yeah. well. And um, what ended up happening from that? He loved the way that I did business. I enjoyed the way that he did business. And at the end of that, we said, hey, let's let's do this together. Wow. You know, so we, we took it and we we split it right down the middle. Hey, Larry, you have everything dealing with buyer relationships, listing, um, not listings, but uh, leases, apartment locating. You handle that side of the business. And then I'm going to handle marketing properties and and just exposing, getting new clients and things of that matter. And that's workforce. We, we grew that. From the tough times to reevaluating the way that business worked to to ten years in January. So, how big is the firm now? We have grown to fifty agents, um, mm -hmm. and so with the fifty agents, uh, it, the Houston Association of Realtors looks at us as a large firm. But we love the idea to continue to 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 practice as a a boutique company. So, we a lot of the things that we specialize in are big com big company items. So. Our biggest competitors is your, your, and I wouldn't say competitors, but people that we like to associate ourselves with would be your, your KWs, your mm -hmm. uh, Remaxes, and Century 21, some of the bigger ones, because that's the kind of brand that we have out there. And it's worked very, very good for us, and, and not only in Houston, but in other communities as well as Dallas. And we've done business in Atlanta with some of the partnerships that we've gotten. So we're, we're all over the place with this real estate. Okay. So the two, what, two, three keys for yes. a good business partnership. We said, partnership. We said communication. Communication would be one. Okay. Um, number two that I would say outside of um, outside of communication would be an open door, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. literally, if any time of morning, evening, night, if it's something on my chest, then I'm going to take that in. Okay. And and I'm going to listen to Mike, and then understand how to weight pros and cons because the one thing that has gotten us over so many challenges and that has allowed our business to grow is we understand pros and cons if it's a great if i think it's a great idea and i share with mike and mike said mike meant because he's my mentor as well okay. and i'm his mentor so mm -hmm. we mentor each other and that's one of the things that a lot of people don't get like we you, you have two highly intelligent um, owners that are sitting in the same room sharing advice from different experiences. We come from different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And so with those different experiences, if I come with Mike and I'm saying, oh, this is the best idea since sliced bread, Mike is going to listen to that idea and he's going to say, well, Larry, this doesn't check more. That doesn't <laughs> mm -hmm. check more. Do you really want to pay this much? And I'm like, yeah, that wasn't the greatest ideal, right? So yeah. we, that's a lot of our things come down to pros and cons. If we, we get on the chalkboard together and we if everything lines up, we go for it. If it doesn't, he talks me down or I talk him down, then that's the direction that we go in. With the economy, I kind of feel like the economy is kind of shaky. Some people mm -hmm. say it's up. Some people say it's stagnant. But would you encourage um, partnerships for business, for new business owners? I will not ever do another business that I don't have a partner in. 
hands down. That's how much I believe in partnerships. And I've okay. started a, several different businesses okay. and tried to do it by myself. Mm-hmm. But what finds is the growth aspect of it, right? Yeah. You're going to be in your business more than working yeah. on your business. And so partnerships to me is just the way to go. I think that's the time that we live in if you really want to grow, right? So um, back in the days, maybe partnerships were not as stagnant because you had people that had to always come to you. But now, I mean, partnerships is something that but it comes with trust. So, right, right. And, you know, if I had a fourth thing, fourth thing would have been trust. You have to trust a partnership because I don't see, I don't always see Mike. A yeah. lot of people laugh because they're like, y'all work in the same company, same <laughs> office, then what you mean you don't see Mike? I, I may go a week and not mm-hmm. see Mike, but I trust and love and know that he's doing his part to make the company grow and I'm doing my part. And, and the same thing because I love to travel. Mm-hmm. And so Mike might be like, somebody will call Mike. I remember one, uh, one time last year, Mike FaceTimed me. I was in a, the Dominican Republic. He said, somebody just called and told me that you out of town and you on Instagram. I was like, yeah. And he was like, man, you love to travel. So, <laughs> but he, love, he loves the idea that he has a partner yeah. that does not mind going out, living life, yeah. and we still know that we're taking get, care of our responsibilities. Get her done. Yes, ma'am. Get her done. All right. So you said something earlier. Okay. You grew up in a hip hop community. We're gonna yeah. backtrack a little bit. <laughs> you grew up in a hip hop community. You're from Houston. I am. All right. So, what was your childhood like? So, I was raised. Uh, I was raised by my grandmother, and, and just to kind of give you like a, a little pointer. I come from an area, you know, where your MLKs are, your urban communities, urban inner city. Mm-hmm. And um, I was my grandmother. My grandmother did an awesome job at um, raising myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I had several cousins that lived with us. My brother, it was about eight of us living in a two bedroom home. So my grandmother just uh, stayed focused and she was one of those type that was like, you boys are going to be good one day. Y'all going to mm-hmm. be great. So she always said that. Mm-hmm. And so um, things have been good. <laughs> I'm making her dreams come true, right? I'm living, I'm living everything that she told me that I was going to be doing. Okay. Yeah. And you recently, you've and recently, you have found a way to honor your grandmother. Yes, I uh, in October we launched a nonprofit. It's called a Grandparents Love. It is a five hundred c three nonprofit organization um, where we really help bridge the gap between the, the understanding that grandparents have in their their grandchildren. So we largely do that part. And as you know, and as and as a lot of people may know. Most grandparents are raising the, their grandchildren that are already, they're already retired. And so mm-hmm. one of the things about them being retired is they're on a fixed income. So when it comes down to that fixed income, it's very tough for them to do a lot of things that the kids really, really need done. And so the organization itself, um, we really uh, help to kind of bridge that financial gap for them as well as the educational gap. So if you don't mind me asking, um, how are you raising funds is it donations grants thank you for asking mm-hmm. yes we are doing we we have someone that's writing some grant for us but okay. donations are the things that always always allow a nonprofit organization to grow and do more so just if it's okay i'd like to share the website with your, of with course. your viewers okay so it is a, a grandparentslove.org uh, please feel free to go on again at a grandparentslove.org Please feel free to go on and donate. And then what you could do, because it is a 501c3, you can print out that receipt and you can use it towards your taxes even before the end of the year or going into the next year. Something that you'll have there. And we have a lot of events that will be coming up. And I I would love for anyone to come out and uh, just participate in them, you know, even with volunteering some of your time. So log in, join our newsletter uh, on grandparentslove.com. And uh, you'll be able to see it. I'm sorry. That is grandparentslove.org. And I guess how I understand you're helping the families through economic and education assistance. So, like, are you allocating funds to them or buying supplies that they may need? A large amount of it is us buying some supplies that they would need. So one of the things that stood out when I was a child was, yes, my grandmother didn't have enough money to provide all of our needs, but then... We really, when when I was younger, we didn't have any meals around the home mm. to fix some of the repairs mm-hmm, that need to happen. Mm-hmm. So, if it was if it was a sheetrock damage, if mm-hmm. it was a door that was coming off the hinges, these were our challenges that my grandmother had. So, those are some of the things, some of the ways that we're stepping up to kind of help with that as well. Okay, awesome. 
So, and how has the response been so far this year? Awesome. We we launched everything in October this year. I did it on my birthday. Um, had a big event. Lots of people came out. Um, I can't I can't be thankful enough for just the type of love that the city of Houston has always shown me. And they came out in big numbers. Um, we did get quite a few donations, in which a large amount of those we're going to be using during uh, the Christmas holidays. Mm-hmm. We're doing exactly what I just said, just helping back, giving back into the community to these. Um, households that are being hit by grandparents. Now, and I know my audience for professionals, we have good jobs or whatever. Um, and I know we're able to donate. Yes. Okay, We're able to do that. But what if we know someone that's a grandparent or a family that needs your help? Um, how can we, I guess, get that information? Like those that the that families that need help, important. how can they get in contact oh, yeah, with that you? That is very important as well. And so you can also, they can, you can also, that information and the contact information okay. and how we can follow with people is also on the website, which is uh, grandparentslove.org. Uh, and then my cell phone number, just in case someone wants to directly contact me, is 281-924-4954. We will have a uh, chairman of the board nominee uh, taking place uh, over the, in December. So I may be, my role may be changing uh, mm-hmm. but for the most mm-hmm. part for for everybody that's on the board uh, we're we're here for the organization and we're here to grow and help families now i know it's been a short time mm-hmm. but what has been some of the differences you notice between a real estate business and your nonprofit? you know in a real estate business or just I, business in general because i know you yeah, have several but... in, in, in 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 business in general you 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 don't have to ask as much like you know <laughs> <laughs> that's been the biggest thing to me you know because in, 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 when you're in a charitable organization you're doing a lot of asking and, it, and it's a it's so in, in in a business i'm providing a service directly to whomever my consumer is mm-hmm. that i'm giving a service to and uh, when you're doing a charitable thing, I'm asking you to give so mm-hmm. I can help somebody else, mm-hmm. right? So that's Good always, um, I think that that's what I'm learning. So mm-hmm. I'm learning that I'm asking my peers, my friends, people that I'm coming in contact with, total strangers, mm-hmm. hey, help me here so that I can help these yeah. other family. Yeah. Versus when it comes to real estate, look, this is what I can do for you. <laughs> you use my service, you're going to be yeah, good, yeah, right? Yeah. So it's, um, that's, that's, that's been the, the biggest things that I've seen. That's a good point. Mm-hmm. Okay. So let's business. You know, I can talk about business all day. Sounds good. good. All right. So most people, they like to say that successful people have gone to where they are by luck or they were handed opportunities, mm-hmm. right? Was this the case for you? Girl, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> that was not the case. I um, I was not handed this. It mm-hmm. was, it's been a daily, you know, you'll hear some people use the term hustle. Mm-hmm. You'll hear some people say grind. Mm-hmm. Uh, for myself, it has been exactly that. You know, I, I was blessed with the opportunity of being raised by my grandmother, which she was an entrepreneur in her own right. Mm-hmm. So one of the things that my grandmother was an entrepreneur, at, she was the cool cup lady. Okay. So I'll just explain to the audience that may be up north that's not down <laughs> south, right? So down south, you have where you have individuals that may have their house, where the people come and buy candy. And in my case, my grandmother had candy, pickles, and cool mm. cups. And so cool cup is um, is Kool Aid. Add it, add some sugar in it. Then my grandmother had a special ingredients. I'm not telling anyone still. And uh, you freeze it. And next thing you know, it's this hard thing. It's a syrupy topping. It's sweet. And it's just ice. It's a block of ice that's sweet. But you sure that's the secret ingredient? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> secret ingredients that day. Hey, that that one I'm a choice. Um, that one I have. I'm was illegal? Is it an illegal ingredient? I'm just so it was a. Uh, so she was a, she was the first entrepreneur that I ever mm, came in, in mm-hmm. contact with. So it set precedents that you know I knew that I could do it. Even though yeah. I went and got a degree, I knew that if I didn't, I had other avenues to mm. really build out and, and figure my way through business. Gotcha. But what are, I guess, 16 years Mm -hmm. real estate? One thing. One thing. Right? The book, Gary Keller, The One Thing. Yeah. Like, what are some of those things that have just kept you motivated, that has kept you on track? So before Gary Keller came out with The One Thing, which is a great book Mm -hmm. I read, and I think everyone should read Mm -hmm. it. It really helps you put things in perspective. I had Master Pete. 
And here's the thing that I learned from Master P, right? Hey. Master P became very successful in the music industry. Mm -hmm. but Master P always wanted to play professional basketball. Rightfully so. Mm -hmm. but once he mastered how to become a great artist and build his own company when it came to the music industry, mm -hmm. He became an NBA basketball player for a whole year. A lot mm -hmm. of people don't know that, mm -hmm. but he wasn't getting paid a large amount of money. It just was a dream that he always mm -hmm. wanted to fulfill. So what I took away from that was, you know what? Let me build one business. After I've successfully built that business, then I can start something else or mm -hmm. I can allow that business to live out, to help me live out my dream. So I've always enjoyed travel. Real estate was my vehicle that I built that allows me to travel whenever I want to. Gotcha. So that's that's been the one thing that really has stood out when it comes to just the way that I handle the real estate industry and business itself. Okay. So you're a serial entrepreneur? I am a serial entrepreneur. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Do you feel like you, what do you like most? Starting a business? Growing a business? Have you sold a business? I enjoy, I enjoy growing, well, I enjoy starting a business. Okay. I enjoy starting a business and remember, like I was saying earlier, I love partnerships. So mm -hmm. I like starting a business, building that vision out with someone else that's going to help me grow it and then starting another business. Okay. Um, I have a tax, we had a tax company the last three years. We sold it. Oh, at the, good. We're, we're in okay. the process of actually selling it. Okay. So we're getting out of the tax industry and we're going to just continue to expand in the real estate market. Gotcha. So uh, we, have, uh, we, have a, we have one corporate location in Houston and we're going to expand over this year to four different locations within the city of Houston. I think lots of times when people want to start a business, they fit, they see the freedom, right? Mm -hmm. So obviously you have your business with the luxury to travel, the freedom and the luxury to travel, right? And when you started your tax business, was selling it, that like, did you go in, well, okay, we're going to sell this within mm -hmm. X amount of years? You know what? When we first went into it, we saw an opportunity because I was exposed mm -hmm. to it by one of my clients. Okay. I was, I was, they, they exposed me to it. And I think at the time that we got into it, the industry changed. The way gotcha. that the, the IRS gotcha. did tax services changed. And so that was huge because when we came in, we myself and Mike don't do taxes. Yeah. Right. So we're we're relying on the skill set of other people to do taxes very good. And so they did. They did them very well and they put us in a position where we could sell it and get out of the industry. So I love it. we 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 it's not for for us, that first quarter, because taxes is done in the first quarter mm -hmm. of the year. Well, that first quarter, our real estate company took a hit these last three years because we were so focused on making that sure that vehicle was working. So, you know, he and I sat out with some of our pros and cons, mm -hmm. and we decided that it's better to liquidate that side of mm -hmm. it and just continue to expand the real estate because that first quarter is so important. That I yeah. Understand. I appreciate your honesty. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see. What what else do I have for you? This, I always find it interesting when I'm interviewing, or like I like to say, conversation. Yeah. yeah, with the friends. Like I know you, but I don't know you. <laughs> <laughs> but let's you know, get to know you. I'm an open book. I mean, I, you know, I, when it comes to business, it's mm -hmm. just it's just been something that I've always been a part of. Yeah. So you know, again, 16 years. I've seen and done a lot. Yeah. I've helped a lot of people. One of the things that stands out now is in our, my, my real estate brokerage firm, we're expanding. So we've gotten up to 50 realtors and, and we're, we're, we're continuing to learn and train and continue to gather more. So um, that's one thing that, you know, teaching and coaching, that's in my blood now. Mm -hmm. Like that's when I see someone trying to do what it is that I do, if I can give them a small nugget to take them over the over the top or to, to allow them to be able to express themselves and see different things. That's where I'm at with it. And so at least that leads into, you know, even the things when it came to me coming out with the book this year, that mm -hmm. led into the reason why the book became, it wasn't, mm -hmm. it wasn't something that I was like, Oh, I just want to go put out a book. It mm -hmm. was something that after having several conversations, putting the right people in place that that was able to, to, to come to fruition. Would you consider yourself a, Real estate speaker, mm. business speaker, or a motivational speaker? Real estate is second nature to me. Okay. Right? okay. You, real estate come up, I'm, I'm all, I'm, I can go all day and all night. No doubt about it. That's that's just second nature. That's like, that's an in general conversation. Mm -hmm. Speaking, that's a conversation. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to, um, I would probably say, uh, I when it comes to speaking, I'm more of a motivational speaker. 
simply because of some of the things in my background really allows me to touch the soul of people mm. to give them that to give them if I can do it anyone can and that's literally when I used to hear that I didn't believe mm -hmm. it, right when I graduated college I still didn't believe mm -hmm. it I hadn't read enough books I hadn't got enough mm -hmm. of the knowledge in me that I needed to to understand and how to get it but now I truly believe that if I if I can do it anyone can do it and some of the things that Give an example of some of the things that I put in that I believe in, right? So I read daily, I read daily, and I'm always finding a way to put, you know, positive information inside of me. I look at it this way. I remember Zig Ziglar said it best. Zig said, you know, we go through life, we take showers when we get dirty. We feel, mm -hmm. we feel like we musty, we sweat, or whatever that is. And so he said, we take showers. But he said, what people don't do is you run through society, you get bad news, mm. you get bad energy around you, negativity, but you don't replace it with positive energy or positive information putting it inside of you. So that's where a lot of people miss out on their, 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 their them, them achieving their goals. So that's one of the things that I, I pride myself in is getting up every morning, making sure that I'm reading and putting positive information on me so it exudes. When I walk in the office, I'm excited. When, yeah. I'm up into, when I go into the gym, regardless that it's 4.30 in the morning or 5.30 in the morning, I'm excited. Mm -hmm. And so it's because I put some of those those fruits inside of me that's going to give me that energy to pass along to someone that might not have had such a good night or might not have had a good start to their morning. So I... um. I can't think of where this quote came from, but it was one of the most powerful ones when I first got into real estate. And it was uh, because when I first got in, it was not an easy business. It was a struggle mm -hmm. and things were bad. But one of the things that I took took away with that I got from that a gentleman said to me is um, you have bad moments. But there's no, don't ever allow it to turn into a bad day. A bad right, month, right, right, right. And so one of those things that, st that stands out to me because, I mean, you can wake up in the morning, stump your toe, and it's, oh, you know, it can throw your day off. Yeah. But if you don't allow it to ruin everything, it's a bad moment. It hurt for a moment. Yeah. You know? And I don't think I've seen that quote, but that's definitely something I became aware of earlier this year. It's mm -hmm. like, no more bad days. I have a bad moment. Yeah. But whatever happens, whether it's, you know, I teach, but whether it's like eight o'clock in the morning, yeah. now I still literally have 16, 20 something odd hours to recover. Mm -hmm. And I can't soak in that. It's like, I got to get my mind right. Whether yeah. it's sit in the car, just, you know, 15 minutes and, yeah. you know, play that one, you know, Rick Ross song or what, <laughs> <laughs> whatever right. it may be. Yeah. But yeah, it's like, you know, and I'm trying to really push people. I'm like, look, um, your gra gratitude shapes perspective. That's right. That's you know, yes. and and I was telling a friend because she was like, um, she don't want to get kicked out of her apartment. She's like, I could stay here, and I was like, like be grateful. You have options, right. right? Like no one. Don't get me wrong. No one wants to sleep on the couch, right? No one wants to crash at a parent's house or a best friend's house. But you know how many people don't even have that option. Don't have options, yeah. That's and. And I was like, look, I got you. You know, if it gets yeah. down to that, I got you. But I was like, it's all about perspective. Yeah. And I think, like, I don't know. Can you teach that to someone? And that's the thing I've been kind of thinking about lately because there's so many books, professional, personal development, mm -hmm. motivational speakers. And we all have great, insightful, powerful messages. Mm -hmm. But can you really teach someone to be positive or, you know, shaping that perspective? To answer the question, yes. Okay. I, I've done it before. Mm -hmm. and, and now it, everyone's learning curve is different. Okay. Right? So I've had some people that have just been rotten when it came to negativity mm. because the only thing they ever seen or I don't think they ever heard their parents say is mm. negative things. Oh, mm -hmm. don't overthink it because it's going to turn bad, turn out bad. Like, mm. They never want to speak things into existence or really believe in something hard enough for it to come true. So I've, I've been in contact with those type of people. I, I had a, a friend of mine. She's living here in Houston. Everything about her life was just continued to be an uphill battle, uphill mm -hmm. battle. And I would always be positive. And so, you know, you can, and some people, you can annoy them with your positivity, right? <laughs> yeah. But I didn't care. I was like, this is the, yeah. I, from, 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 coming from where I came from, if I can make it, anybody can. Mm -hmm. So my, my positive energy is, I'm going to give it to you with everything that I got. Mm -hmm. And so I did that. And then I seen that person a year later. I was out in L.A., bumping to him in L.A., and um, the one thing that they said is like, everything you said to me, Larry, was so true. Mm. And it didn't, you know, I wasn't the vehicle that really got it, that gave them the foundation. 
but then they bumped into another layer. Mm. They bumped into mm. a third layer. Mm-hmm. And they bumped into these people that had found success, that had came from challenging situations that that person could relate closer to than myself, but they were saying the exact same thing. So they took that information and they changed. And to this day, I'm, 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 I watch them on Instagram and I'm like, I used to say that. And wow. now I'm seeing yeah. them saying it. And yeah. You see the improvement in their life. You see the energy in their life change. You see them going from no car to car. You yeah. see them going yeah. from sleeping on the couch to having their own yeah. place. So it's just a, it's that energy. So I think that, I think that it just takes a while. I think that it takes a lot of different people, right? So a lot of people surround themselves. A lot of people don't have a powerful enough positive positive circle around them. I think mm-hmm. that there's there's a saying that says you're going to be just like your your network is going to be like your five closest friends. Mm-hmm. So one of the things that we have to do, we have to remember to grow. We don't want to be the ca- in the captain seat of our friendships, right? I always try to have friendships where um, I got my personal relationships with my boys, and mm-hmm. then I have business relationships that people with people that know more than me, they've seen mm-hmm. more than me, that I can grow to inspire to be like, because I really want to continue to grow. I got a legacy to live. Oh, what's, what, what's the legacy? What's <laughs> the Brooks legacy? legacy? Man, I, you know, my vision is to to, to leave generational wealth. Yeah, right. Absolutely. I want to I give my family an opportunity to love, to have a, a step up. Um, because I didn't, because I didn't come from that. Mm-hmm. You know, everything that I built is been grassroots. Yeah. Started it, Build it, start it, build it, all me. But the ideal is I'm putting the vehicles in place so that, you know, I have a son, I have a third. And so when when Trey gets old enough, he can take over, he can he can do his own thing and just know he has the financial backing mm-hmm. to do it, or he can build off what I'm what I'm gonna leave him. And my my belief in where this came from, I was in college, I mean my senior year, sitting down with some uh some guys that I play football with and it was one white guy, and he said, he said, yeah, I guess I'll go ahead and graduate and go into the family business. That's how he said it. He just like, I'm just, you know, I'm going to school. I ain't have to come to school. This how you got, because I can't even look like, huh? He was like, you know, I ain't have to come to school. I yeah. just, you know, came to school because parents felt like it would be a good idea, and then just go into the family business. Yeah. So I want my son to have that yeah. same opportunity. This, this the option, the stage, man. Right? Just Such walk across a, stages because it's something to do, but you're already financially in a place where you're not worried about it. It's such a powerful, like a powerful option to mm-hmm. have. And, you know, coming with from a finance background, I mean, I would sit on the phone, whether it's the financial advisor or the investor, and, you know, people were calling and they're like, yeah, my dad just died. And um, so I'm the beneficiary. So, you know, just I'm just going to liquidate this. <laughs> You know, four hundred and seventy-five thousand yeah. dollars <laughs> mutual fund account. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for them doing it. Like, Let me tell you, I learned a lot from that too. My financial advisor started lacing me with yeah. understanding, and I'm like, oh, so life insurance is a good vehicle. Yeah, have, right? it's so, crazy. Yeah. It and is. and I mean, I just. Oh, it's so important to me, um, just for our people, you know, our mm-hmm. community to know that and get the knowledge and the education. But I've realized, you know, that self-discipline. Yeah. Right. One That's is right. the education, right? Actually being able to put yourself in that room to hear the message. Sure. And you then don't once, know what you don't know. Right. And then once you actually know it, right, mm-hmm. you know that information are you self-disciplined enough to practice, That's you right. know, whether it's uh, making those monthly contributions, not spending as much or on frivolous I stuff. Totally agree. But, yes, um, ma'am. Yep. So, but you're doing everything right. You real estate, right? Yeah. The yeah. business. No doubt about it. Real estate. Nonprofit. <laughs> so what's missing? What's missing? Um. So I just read again, Siri entrepreneur, finding great ideas and, and, and just trying to capitalize on them. Um, with the book and also started a online boutique, which oh. is which we're actually going to be launching as we go into to uh, the holiday season. Mm-hmm. So have an online boutique. It is shoplwb.com, and hey, I'm excited about that too. I got I'm wearing my own clothes now, right? So who knew? <laughs> Jay Z said a verse. Hey. I was at the Jay Z concert. Jay Z say, "Who knew Hover would be?" Oh, buy, I mean, have his own clothes. So, look, who knew that I would, you know, have my own, you know, site where I can purchase my own clothes, wear my own clothes for events that I have taken place. And, um, and it's been a big thing. So, real big. You thing. follow Gary Vee? 
I do follow Gary Vee. And he has what an entrepreneur with his own shoe. Yeah, Gary Vee. Crazy. Vee, yes, and then and I listen to him. He's a funny guy to me too. And mm-hmm. I, I love. I, yeah, I listen to Gary Vee. The one that I actually took. Um, what is his name? I took the. Well, not took, but one that actually does a lot of online business and I cannot think of his name right now, but he's actually where I got the vision to say, Hey, you know what? I'm growing a brand. If I can sell, if I can sell 500, uh, 500 copies of a book self published, then why can't I create a website Mm -hmm. that I can actually, people like what I have on, or even if, if I'm able just to get in front of a larger audience with social media being the way that it is, that they can't go on and, and purchase some of the things from a boutique mm-hmm. store that I have. So um, thank you, Jay-Z, for the, the motivation <laughs> behind it. Right. Ty, Ty Lopez. Right. That's my uh, guy from Ty Lopez. Thank you, guys. No and, comment on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not really a fan of Ty Lopez. The only thing that stands out to me about Ty, and again, mm-hmm. this is why, is because of his savviness when it comes to online that online shopping thing. Mm. That's really his key. Now, he's a well-read guy. He likes mm-hmm. to read. And I like that concept that mm-hmm. him and his friends came out with, with the, um, actually, that's one of the, another, another one of the people that, that I really admire when it comes to partnerships. These are not a lot of businesses that he grows. He just gets into partnership from partnership to partnership. And so one of the ones that he started was that whole, they read the book for you thing. Mm-hmm. And then, they send you the book and with a synopsis of what the book meant. I thought that was pretty creative. We should have came up with that. <laughs> Don't get me started on well, business ideas. Oh my gosh. I might have to. I might have like, Larry, got an idea. Hey, that Let me tell me what you need me to do. Hey, like <laughs> so say, we can run with exactly it. That's exactly what we need to do. Yes. Collaborations. Heading into 2018. 2018. Excited. So, <laughs> goals, so here's my thoughts, thing. So uh-huh. you know, I'm an October goal writer, right? Okay. So okay. I wrote out my goals uh, last month, and so just I'm going to expand and continue to build on a grandparents' love. That's mm-hmm. actually going to be number one going into this okay. new season. Um, number two is going to be the way that the, the real estate brokers firm is going. We're we're at 50 agents. We would like to add an additional 50 by the mm. end of the year. So we're looking at at least 100 going into um, going into 2019. Mm-hmm. Another thing that's standing out is I, I like to develop, I want to develop more of my business coaching. So mm-hmm. I love giving entrepreneurs the energy, the drive, and the knowledge that I have. So I've built several companies from the ground up. I know how to do it. I know how to interact with people. I know the secrets. And so that's one of the things that I'll be taking on in 2018, doing more speaking engagement, but really taking that speaking and, and, and really speaking more directly to other business owners, other entrepreneurs that I can help them grow their business and the activities that they have going on with them just based off systems that I already did. Everything is systems. You get the yeah. right systems, yeah. it takes off. And, and, and for my real estate company, my business partner, Michael, which is an engineer by trade, he's a lot, he's put some great business systems in place and then network duplicate. Mm-hmm. We can take them and dupl- mm-hmm. duplicate them in our tax business. Mm-hmm. I'm, du- I'm duplicating when it comes to the way that my online, my online uh, boutique is working. I'm duplicating when it comes to how to grow our awareness when it comes to our grandparents love and more people knowing mm-hmm. about that website and knowing about the people that we're helping. So I'm using, all those, th- all them same systems to grow these different businesses. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Got to have a system. Got to have a system. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and I look forward to being on your podcast more. You know, those days when you go, <laughs> you go on vacation, you don't take the podcast with you. I'll be like, yeah, let me host. I want to host some podcasts. I'm oh, not consistent man. enough to do it myself, but I come on and help out. Oh, man, the podcast. You know, <laughs> I've, um, like, let me do my little confession moment. <laughs> like during Harvey, I lost momentum Mm -hmm. because I have a very strict schedule. So like I usually, I only open up my interview slots for three weeks, like once every two months. Wow. So I, you know, I have people on hold, the, the, you know, they email me, Instagram, Facebook, like I get messages from all over and I'll, put people on hold until I open up my interview slides. And then I'm like, oh, this is the link in yeah. where you fit in. And then Harvey came and, um, I messed up my school ske- schedule cause I teach. Yeah. And then like all of my interviews just, I don't know. It, and I was kind of like, I lost momentum yeah. and now I'm like, okay, Michelle, you know, what do you want to do with the podcast? Mm-hmm. Cause I was doing episodes twice a week. Mm-hmm. So I went back down to once a week 
and um, I don't know. Come it's, on, I just, <laughs> come on. Hey, hey, you have the system in place. I already. See. I do. I you do have, have a system, system in I like place. It. I'm watching you. Um, that it's it's your thing. You just. You know, it's, it's funny because sometimes it takes the smallest things to throw us out of our groove, which hardly mm-hmm. was not a small thing. Mm-hmm. And, that, and that could throw us out of our groove. We just take a little bit of time to yeah. get into it. Yeah. I, I got thrown out of my groove two weeks ago messing with the Astros. Yeah, they going to want to go out here and win a series, which I love. <laughs> See, champions. Don't get me but, started on that. But I'm t- when I say I was out seven, every game, every game they play, I'm out. I'm typically not out these type of hours. I'm out. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Every regiment, workout regiment, eating regiment, everything went out the window. But I love it, man. Every bit of the World Series. I was so. kicking the students out of the classroom. <laughs> had the game up, just watching it on the computer. Like, yeah. I am not leaving. I don't even watch baseball like that. Hey. <laughs> Congratulations to all the strolls, man. They, they, yeah. that, was, that was impressive. Definitely salute to the home team. Yes, yes. No, but I, I, there's so many things I want to do with the podcast. And um, I think I, you know, you mentioned, I like how you said um, niche, what niche name, what you say, niche name? Mm-hmm. Not nickname, but niche name. <laughs> and um, yeah, and it's just really exploring, you know, other topics and trying to bring people in on a regular basis um, to, go beyond business but you know life because i feel like we're all on this climb yeah and i think um i think sometimes people get so rigid or how can i say it this is me this is my struggle right when you're in the middle it's hard to see it true right that's right but bringing people in such yourself and other experts it just I don't know, makes it more feasible. And it's like, okay, let me look at my life in this, you know, with this new perspective from this conversation. Okay, what do I need to look in this area? Because I've never been open. I've never really been open when it comes to business partnerships, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then it's kind of like, okay, what do I need to look for? How do I navigate? Because it's like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. And how to navigate these waters. I would love to say that I was a creator, of it, but I was not. One of the things that I did is I ended up getting it. Me and Mike got a a business coach and a real estate coach at one Mm -hmm. point. The thing is, is because we had plateaued. We got Mm -hmm. to the point where we was like, Mm -hmm. we're killing it. We're doing everything we're doing, but you don't know what you don't know yeah. and so when we brought someone in to look at our business from an exterior standpoint they mm-hmm. looking at our business while we're still working inside of it yeah. and they were able to point out look if you twist this or cut this you can expand mm-hmm. your network and you're gonna you can explode and mm-hmm. everything that they said looking at it and the thing is is they knew they they've trained and taught other people before so they knew this they knew what yeah. the what our system was missing that we couldn't put together at one point so that having that mentor and that those business coaches really allowed us to like touch that market and say oh okay this is what we need to tweak and when we tweaked it it exploded because we didn't know what, it, yeah. what we didn't know like I, I say that so often because that's so true, especially when it comes from our culture, because mm-hmm. we don't have a lot of people. I didn't know, for example, I didn't know what real estate was until I, to my friend's family exposed me to mm-hmm. it. We didn't have realtors come and speak to us at school. Yeah. It just wasn't visual. Like, yeah. what's a realtor? You know, yeah. the average age for a realtor was 58 years old. Most oh, of, the career of a realtor is usually a second job for most people. Mm-hmm. It was my first. It's been my only real, mm-hmm. it's been my only real career going into coming into real estate, but you didn't have people my age in real estate. Yeah. I, was, I was one of the youngest when I got into the business and just really dove into it and took it on as my own. But most of the time, realtors are average age is 58 and it's a second career. So they've already been a doctor, lawyer or pilot. And then they say, hey, I'm going to relax and do real estate. That's how <laughs> I look at it. So, yes, open up to partnerships. I think that that's ideal. It'll allow you to expand your brand more. It, would, it also would allow you to do more. Mm-hmm. Because you're not taking on all of the responsibilities mm-hmm. by yourself, I guarantee. You. I I love Michael G. Davis. I tell you, I mean, these kids be battling for him from time to time. <laughs> I'm like, nah, you get out my way. He's mine today. So I'm just saying. I, yeah, yes. shout out to Michael. Great guy. <laughs> Great guy. Great guy. Yeah, and I mean, I, I have other partnerships. Yeah, of course. You know, I I I I would I would just say thank you to. Um, there's a Stephanie Harper. She helps me out with a lot of things. This is my business builder partner. So mm-hmm. I do a lot of business builder workshops once a quarter. Mm-hmm. Uh, I actually just got back from, um, uh, she was hosting one in the Dallas area. So we just got back from that one. And so that really, again, that, that, uh, that having that mentor, that partner, 
that partnership allows me to see more that I can't see on my own. So um, doing those business building workshops with her really helped out in that, in that moment as well. Um, Darren Palmer, he's a, he's mm-hmm. actually the gentleman that helped me self publish uh, my book, the Entrepreneur mm-hmm. Quote book that I have, and so. Again, he was another great mentor when it came to this that yeah, industry, yeah. right? I didn't I didn't know what to expect, and he said, "Hey, here's what's gonna happen. You know, you're gonna publish this. You're gonna publish this book, and once it's out there, um, you're gonna have people reach out to you about speaking engagements." Girl, well, he's telling the truth. I had all kind of people coming at me for that, and I was open to it, but I had no idea. So yeah. then I had to get involved with people that can kind of help me network that water. Mm-hmm. So yeah, partnerships is everything. That's real. Yeah. That's real. Um, go ahead and provide your contact information again. How can people, what, what's your favorite platform, I should say? My favorite platform, believe it or not, is Instagram. I love Instagram. It's kind of, it's a bunch of photos and it's, it's like it's, it's changing into its own little mm-hmm. world. So my favorite platform right now is Instagram. But I am on all platforms and under all those platforms, you can find me at Texas Real Estate King. Um, so again, that's Texas Real Estate King. And then, of course, you can always go directly to my website, my personal website that'll take you to, to any of my social media pages. Also tell you what big events that I have going on or what big events I'll be attending. And that's LarryWBrooks.com. Again, that's LarryWBrooks.com. I dot com that back at 16 years ago when I first got in the game. But I'm just saying, I'm teasing everyone. Final question. <laughs> How do you define success? I define success, and you're not gonna you're not gonna believe this, but I'm finna simplify because everybody likes to define success around money. I don't define success around money. I define success as someone doing what it is that they want to do and they're happy doing it every single day, regardless about money, regardless if it's helping others. They could, if, if you're happy doing whatever it is you're doing on a daily basis, that's success. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Larry Brooks. Thanks for being a guest. Thank you. I'm definitely going to bring you back. Remember, a personal connection leads to an influential network. Thanks for networking with Michelle.